Hi, everybody. This is David Sarita from davidsarita.co. And today we're talking about my um, star coil transmitters. Now, I've been making these and for many, many years, actually. It goes back to Sedona when I made my first, my first star coils. But I started making them and selling them in about 20, 20, 2010 is, is safe to say. And they've really evolved over the years. And it's, it's, um, it, it's been a long journey to come out with a very good effective coil that transmits vortex energy and scalar and, and some tachyon energy. Well, the first thing I kind of wanted to do today is show you really when there's all this talk about scalar you know what is what is scalar and why is it so prevalent in in our culture and and scalar is actually to, um, invented by nikola tesla it's originally called a tesla wave in fact tesla filed a patent for the transmission of of radio signals that actually broke the speed of light by nearly 1.618 times in fact the ability to measure the speed of light accurately in those days is it's not very clear but it looks like he's so close to a ratio of 1 to 1.618 which is golden ratio and the way he did it is he he creates a it's a it's a it's really an alternating current radio, meaning one wave is oscillating with its wave peaks in one direction and one is going the other at the same time. And so when, when Tesla made his first coils that really were the birth of radio, it, it was very, very simple. They were cylindrical coils with copper coated wire wrapped in a cylinder. And that's how we gave birth to radio. Very, very simple form of radio, but it's really an inductor transmission of radio. But then the, the Tesla coils revolutionized the way we use electricity. And Tesla never made anything like this. He never made anything like this, which is a geometric design I came up with to organize the different layers of my star coil um, I use steel bobbins mounted on steel poles and using the plexiglass as a base. And this one is a seven level, kind of like a wedding cake. And what actually happens in these, see, all PEMF devices have three phases. They have your, your, the purity or the quality of the frequency source. And then they have the purity and the quality of your amplification or your power source. And they have the purity and the quality of your emitter, your, your transmitter. So this part, because we've talked about the wands so far, and now we're going into coils. This is an emitter. So this will last 100 years. And... One of the things that happened since I came out with these is I had somebody working for me some years ago and P and he started, of course, he copied everything I did illegally and started making them and claiming they were his. And we're, we get tons of reports of people saying that they, they blow up the power supply, they smell smoke, they don't work, there's no activity coming out of it. And that's because they're made wrong. Now, you're going to see ever since I came out with this design. There are so many fake copies out there. You really have to be aware as a consumer looking for a good pulse electromagnetic field device for, for specific reasons to understand that most people out there don't know what they're doing. I mean, I was appointed director of the Tesla Foundation by an MIT PhD, Bogdan Castle Magwitch. I spoke in the United States Congress on nuclear fusion. Um, as director of the Tesla Foundation, I've studied all of Tesla's patents. I spent years and years researching Tesla. 
And I, I see so many people getting sucked into buying these really cheap little coils with this little signal amplifier and their garbage. And here's one of the ways you can tell is put them on a good pair of headphones like these. These are AKG. And try using a cheap amplifier and listen to your favorite music. You know, you and you'll see it sounds like mush. And that's essentially what's happening. If you're using a cheap amplifier, um, your, your frequencies are going to be mush on your brain. So do you want to have nice, beautiful, velvety frequencies or do you want to have mush? And mo most of what's out there is mush. And so many people who are making these, they're, they're crossing the wires wrong. They don't know what they're doing. And they're getting short circuits and they're blowing it and they're selling them and they don't give refunds and the people who buy them are mad and they were originally on they originally my customers but they got stolen a, a lot of us are getting hacked there's so many people in this movement that are getting hacked by somebody who's trying to get all their marketing lists in fact i was just listening to whitley Streber. He had a hacker, I mean, come into his website trying to steal all of his data and his customer list. I mean, I could go on and on. Sasha Stone, who I've been on for over a year now as a regular guest, is being hacked all the time. There's hackers out there hacking, and then they're trying to sell you garbage, and people are buying it. I can't even believe they're buying it, but they somebody, are. So somebody is saying, somebody saying that the that the coil you you showed reminds them of a Marco Rodin coil. Okay, so Marco Rodin. I mean, I want to set the story straight here. So when I came out with the Galaxy Clock, which was featured in, it, I'm going to go back even further in the year 2000, the millennium the turning of the millennium, I had this blinding vision of Tesla shining with light in the middle of the day, not at nighttime. I wasn't dreaming. I was lying there in my apartment in Vancouver and there were two other beings of light with him. And he flashed in my mind this model of vortex mathematics that I, I called the galaxy clock. And it was featured in my film Evidence, the case for NASA UFOs that came out um actually came up before the millennium on vhs and then eventually made its way onto dvd and that film got mega millions of views on youtube videos in those days and and that's where i introduced the galaxy clock now i've met marco Roden in person and and he'll tell you this he said you have no idea how much your galaxy clock inspired me now that doesn't mean i invented marco Roden. it means that some of the greatest, like the guys who invented the transistors, John Bardeen, Will Shockley, and Will Bratton, three guys playing off each other's consciousness caused the transistor to be born. If, if any of them tried to do it alone, it never would have happened. Marco Rodin's math is unique and proprietary to mine. But what he told me is, you inspired me. And, and that was really wonderful for him to say that to me because – I could say the same to Marco Rodin. You know, he inspired me too. <laughs> so we conversely inspire each other. But it's important to, to, to acknowledge that, right? It's important to understand there's a symbiosis going on. But Marco's coils, I'm going to get it. I'm going to answer your, your questions about are not Marco Rodin coils. Marco told me in person I don't invent coils. I don't make coils. Marco Rodin developed a vortex mathematical model that coil makers claimed was a Rodin coil. I want to be really clear here because he will tell you this. So what happened is I got to spend a lot of time in Sedona with an individual whom I won't name but was making Rodin coils. And they're fascinating. You have to understand this coil. See, the angle of the electric field, the magnetic field coming off a of wire is 90 degrees. So this, in actuality, is a full donut field with 14 stations. Now, rodent coils that are wound on Fisher-Price donuts 
are working on this very weak scale. And only if they have a proper good amplifier will they produce a nice smooth signal. Most of what you're seeing, if you see things that look like rodent coils, does not mean they're wound to rodent mathematics specifications at all, at all. So that's first. And second, if most of them have these little tiny little amplifiers and they're garbage. Again, if you don't believe me, take the same amplifier, put on a good pair of AKG headphones or ESS or some really nice Bowkers and Wilkins headphones and listen to your music. Now, what I've done on my website for my coils, and, and this is entry level coil here. This is kind of the beginning. I tried making small coils and they work on such a weak level that if you're really sensitive, you might feel some energy and benefits. But most of the people who use these little bitty things, they want to throw them out and give them back because they can't feel anything. And that's because they're working on incredibly weak scale. Now, when, when people use one of my coil systems, you're not just paying for this because you can't do anything with this. You're, 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 you're paying for a massive harmonic field library. And what I mean by harmonic field library is I design layers of frequencies that are not unlike a song because a single song has dozens to hundreds of different um, frequency bands within a single song as opposed to a single point frequency like 432. So I have 432 scaled frequencies, but I don't usually work with single numbers, right? So... There's a huge library that comes with this, and there's training that comes with this. And this, the again, the reason I separate my emitter from my amplifier and from my frequency source is, one, most of those devices that are super cheap and made in Hong Kong and China are going to break, and nobody's going to fix it for you. So, And the amplifier is garbage. So even though they say it has this frequency and that frequency, I guarantee you by the time it outputs into a field, it's a mush. I wouldn't put myself anywhere near any of them unless they were made really well. So, and again, the people who are copying me, most of them don't know what they're doing. They may look similar, but they're blowing up people's amplifiers. And I'm just laughing and pulling my hair out. And we, you know, Shiroz and I were on a Zoom call with an individual who is doing this with this other individual who stole everything from my, my invention list and my companies. And, and he's, he's showing me this stuff on camera. I mean, blown up amplifiers, people wanting refunds. I'm like, what are you doing following this guy? What are you doing? You know, you started with me and you went with this total freaking loser who doesn't know anything. And then you're wondering why it doesn't work. Well, see, some people think it's about making more profit, so they make everything cheaper, 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 so they can make more profit. I I use the best quality materials. I also use real gems. In fact, this individual told us that the gems that this guy is using are actually made of plastic. And he tells people things are made of gold. It's just spray paint. There's no conductivity on this alleged gold. It's just spray paint. So without going too much into that, I want to tell you about Scalar and, and how Scalar came to be and, 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 and how my systems produce Scalar. So there, there are what I'm determining are four levels of Scalar field, which is really Tesla. And a, and a Scalar Tesla wave is, is a longitudinal wave in that it's not bobbing up and down like a standard wave model. It's actually circumventing that and it's going perfectly, you could call it horizontal or, or, or transverse, but it, it, is, it is much faster than light. It's far more penetrating, therefore very, very, very effective. And when I was looking at some of the different scalar uh, schematics, 
of of people like um, again, it's hard to name other scientists who, unless I really admire their work. So because you can get into a lot of trouble, so it's hard to name people directly. But there's a lot of scalar out there that is extremely weak. It's operating on an extremely weak scale. So when 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 you wind one of these star patterns correctly, you're because your 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 field keeps crossing each other in a vortex, you're actually producing a double wave, which means it's a scalar wave, which is like an alternating current wave. <clears throat> and therefore, because it's pulsed, it, it's spinning in, in, in two different directions, which is what a, a proper, let me see if I can show you a picture of this, if I can find it on my computer here, because this is a good, um, yeah, show them the picture you showed me earlier. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Uh, the way they, these new Macs work is really difficult compared to the old ones. were much easier. Here you go, Tesla waves. So here is a, let me just close this out and go to share screen. And um, share, share screen. Share screen, share, and then you go to here. So this is an illustration. If you can see the blue, is the arrows are spinning in one direction and, and the red they're spinning in the opposite deck direction. And that's what happens when a field crosses over on itself. And this is how you generate your Tesla wave, which which became known as a scalar wave. But it's not really scalar is just a more modern word for it. But it's actually um, a Tesla wave because Tesla is the one who. Um, did you see that, Shiroz, or, or no? No, we can't see it. Oh yet. boy, yeah, share screen. Share screen. There I go. Share screen. Can you see this model, Tesla Waves Illustration? Not yet. It's not working. The share screen is not working. Just click on share, the plots. I did, but here, maybe you can show it. It's not. Okay, let not me do it. Hold on. See if you can pull the graphic up. Go to system. Unlock this screen by selecting the lock button. No, this is going to be a lot of work here. So, so basically... Because a standard Tesla winding would be just in a cylinder, you don't get a Tesla wave or a scalar wave. But as soon as the wave oscillates over on itself, in fact, Tesla demonstrated an actual radio signal. He filed a patent. I can tell you the patent number because I can't do the share screen function right now. But he filed this patent and he... He transmitted a signal faster than the speed of light. And this, this patent number, you can Google this, is really amazing. It's 787,412 filed May 16th, 1900, where, where Tesla um, passed a, a, a magnetic transmission over the surface of the Earth at 471 1,264 kilometers per second. So he proved faster than light energy with the with these Tesla waves. So basically, you there are different levels of scalar that what are called. What you are all see true. this? Yeah, there you go. So there you go. That's the illustration of a counter rotating or alternating current electromagnetic field variation. But on the but it's on the same axis. Notice the axis is in the middle between the blue and the red. They're not out of phase with each other. So this is how <coughs> this is how you give birth to a Tesla wave. And and of course, some people don't understand that go this actually goes back to Nikola Tesla. But this this is how you do it. And there are several ways to do that. 
And when a coil or vortex winds in on itself, it, it's actually doing that already. So I call that scalar, my base coil, I would call scalar level one, right? So then the, the device that I have, let's go, Shiroz, can you go to the website to the cube? And sure, maybe, hold on. Um, Stop. Because I can't, I can't do share screen. Okay, and hold can, on. Can... I'm doing that. Hold on. Just give me a second. So the cube is is two of these coils counter rotating into each other, which is because the 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 amount of mass and geometry that is organized. What what happens with my invention of using the steel bobbins, I'm separating each level, keeping them organized. Whereas if I wound all of my wire in one bundle, it would be less organized. And the more organized your windings are, the more organized your energy field is, right? So the cube is, is so there powerful. You There's the website, now the cube. So scroll up. You got to scroll up, Shiro. Yeah, so I'm scrolling. See it. Tell me, tell me, I can't see you, just, so tell me what you can just see. Just so we can see it. We, I can't see the cube. So there, keep going up. You got to keep going. So there it is. Yeah, there's the cube. So the cube is a double vortex system. And, and what is so powerful about it is the amount of mass and organized double vortex energy, like, if I showed you some of the schematics for a typical scalar device out there, if you if you pulled the hood off the thing, you would only see a tiny coil apparatus producing your scalar. And that means the response is going to be extremely weak. And that's not how Tesla did things. Tesla did things using a lot of organized wire. And I've looked at Tesla's schematics. I, I know how he built things. He built things very large, actually. So, so this is the cube. There's two, two levels of it. It actually has to do with um, levels of access to the frequency library, which is massive. And, of course, with the cube, you can also do... You can also do... Um, I mean, I can affect an entire apartment building with one of these i can't affect it's also entire... the it's also the second cube is aluminum and the first one is plexi remember is, is plexi yeah but then the, there's the library size and one of the things you can do with the cube because your picture of you is a hologram you can take somebody's photograph because that's their hologram and through quantum communication if, if you put somebody's holographic image inside the, the, the double vortex. Can you, can you see the picture with the, with the cube? Yeah, they can see that. Picture? Yeah, that okay. I put a picture of Jesus in there. And, and that means that the, the memory and this particular painting of Jesus was done by an artist who actually received a divine vision of him. So it's very accurate in his ascended light body form. So this is one of the uses of the cube. You can also put somebody's DNA in there from eyebrows or, in fact, uh, Ruth Drown, um, the, the founder of Radionics, used to do this using um, a filtered, um, unbleached um, coffee uh, filtered paper, taking a, a DNA sample, which can be saliva. And you can a person can send it to a practitioner and they can send that person healing energy at a distance. And this is all operating through the quantum um, quantum function. Now, so let's go out of share screen now, Shiro's back. Yeah, because yeah. I want to show them this on on camera. So on, when, when you have here. this, if this one is spinning clockwise. Sure. The one on top of it is spinning counterclockwise, and the field meets in the middle. And you can see from the diagram of Tesla's scalar, that's what the definition of true scalar is. It's just the difference between this and most of the scalar out there that I've tested and looked at is it's tiny, 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 tiny stuff. 
they don't have enough mass there to to create a big scalar potential field now all living things are scalar so all of us have faster than light functions within it and and that was proven by german physicist fritz albert pop that human dna you know if you really understand the way the 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 dna is a double vortex your dna is scalar on a tiny 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 weak scale and then there there is so what i call the the third level of scalar that i've developed is actually the technology where the pendants are treated and it means it generates true tachyon faster than light energies which is a consequence of scalar see if you look at tesla's radio patent that i demonstrated he went pretty close to 1.618 times the speed of light and that means there's a function of one to the golden ratio or one to i mean i mean it if you do the math it comes to 1.57 which is again the the accuracy of measuring the speed of light back then was so poor i would like to see that recalibrated today because 1.57 is a function of of um, fibonacci's series that leads to the golden ratio and i find that very interesting in fact i'm the first person who noticed that period nobody noticed that so that means that the golden mean um, and and scalar and this and electromagnetic energy meaning the speed of light have are in harmony with one another and one of the other most amazing things you can do with a double vortex generator is you can send one frequency to one coil and, and one to another at the same time and produce what are called differential harmonics which no other device out there that i know of can do that doesn't mean that there isn't one that can do it and doesn't mean there's not other good devices out there i mean i could tell you somebody else who makes really good devices but um there's you know if you really want to know you, you should write me because there are companies that make really good technology out there i'm just saying beware of the cheapos don't put your body in the field of one of these super cheap coil devices cuz you're just it's like entering mush for the brain and you're gonna you're, you're gonna feel like mush afterwards you, you want to come into a nice harmony and the other thing i tell people is like what i have on my website are three different amplifiers you can use with my wands or my coils or my bed systems and my bed systems are the same as these there's four star coils and you're lying right on top of them now electromagnetic energy spins they're in smaller water. though they're smaller, though. They're a little bit smaller, but there's four of them. Electromagnetic energy spins at two-thirds the speed of light. So try and visualize with this a donut-shaped field because the field is 90 degrees to the wire. So it really looks like a donut with the 14 stations. And the number 14, if you go to the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, you'll see a 14-pointed star right at the site where Jesus was born. And you on can the 14th, see it on the on the website page too. It's on it's the website page there. too. There's there's a whole mathematic to why I chose the 14 and not the 12 and not 11 and the 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 way the winding pattern actually works. And then these optionally come with 14 station magnets on the top where you can put rubies, sapphires or amethysts or different interchangeable gems. And the gems when they're because each of the 14 points is acting as an electromagnet because they have a steel core, the the gem will emit an auric field, and every gem has a different energy field. I've seen the aura aura testing on gems, and all gems have totally different energy fields. So when you have 14 gems, and you can get those gems yourself and save money or you can get the ones that come with it we use lab grown rubies or sapphires um because i can't even afford a real sapphire a real sapphire of any size is in the tens of thousands of dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars so 
So lab grown, you know, German high quality are, are very, very, very good to use. So, but the, the next level of scalar, I call scalar level four. It is literally getting close to nuclear fusion. And that's where these pendants go. The, the technology and the system I use to treat the, the pendants is scalar level four, which is incredibly powerful and dense. You're getting close to the conditions where nuclear fusion can happen. And again, I worked for a legendary nuclear fusion physicist for almost 20 years, Bogdan Magler. So I, I know how his machine works. And in fact, let me see if I can send you, Shiroz, to put a picture of this up so people can see this. I really want you sure. to see this. Migma. Let's see if I can get a diagram. There's some questions too and comments I want to share with you. And also like some questions that will help clarify stuff. As soon as you're ready. Yeah, it, it's hard to... Um, I see a picture of Maglitch here with... It's under Rex Research. Um, but that's not a good picture of Migma. Let me see if they have it. Wikipedia has no diagrams, but they have Migma there. Um let me see if I search Migma images. I mean, I spent 20 years on this, so I, I know what there's a good diagram of Migma right there. Oh boy. Then you gotta scroll down. I mean that if I could just get this one um here, let me send you this, Shiroz. I'll send this, put this in the chat. And then, okay. because I'm, I'm having a problem getting my share screen to work. Um, where's the chat? Under comments. You can send it private chat too, and then I can share a screen. Okay, private chat. Go here. Paste. So, I mean, this was my boss for, I mean, I worked with Magwitch off and on for the 20 years. This nuclear fusion device would have changed the world. We would have had a cubic meter of a billion watts of environmentally clean power. Can you go to that presentation, Shiroz? Because I really... Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. I'm sorry. I've never done this before. Actually, you know, had people understand how powerful a vortex field and what its applications can be are. But um, the way everything in the universe, stars, the vortex pattern of the Milky Way galaxy, everything can be explained with vortex mathematics like Marco Rodin. I mean, Marco Rodin to me is a genius. I don't think we should have... Oh. <clears throat> Everyone got sidetracked by Rodin coils, but Rodin, again, Rodin coils are not Marco Rodin. He doesn't make coils. He told me that in person. He said, these are just people who took his mathematics and they decided to make coils with it. But Let me know when Rodin, it shows up. There it is. Okay, Let so now what... scroll down. Okay, hold on. I mean, I was able to speak to Maglitch just before he died. I mean, and it's, he's from Yugoslavia, the same country keep as Tesla. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. This this is really cool for people to see this, actually. Just keep going down. Down. Okay. I mean, we were really – keep going. There you go. You see right there? Right there? No, go back up, up, up. You just this one? passed it. Keep going up. You just you went too fast there. Keep going up, back up. You gotta keep going. That's the actual machine. But you got right there. You okay. see those Migma ordered mixture of orbits right there in the middle. You see the, the pattern, the vortex pattern, A, B, and C. Now B is is really 
a, an infinite amount of flower of life pattern geometries that the, the, the beam that comes into the fusion chamber creates. And the temperatures Magwitch reached were so hot, many, many times hotter than the sun. No one could really believe it, but it was all documented at MIT. And then he moved to um, Orange, Cali, Orange um, County, California, which is where I started working with him. And um, so this, this geometry of this magnetic beam was the key to getting the fuel to behave in a manner that would cause these enormous temperatures to appear inside the chamber. And it, it's all about geometry and organization in the magnetic field. So when, when you're working around, so you can, you can exit share screen. Oh, actually keep scroll down again, scroll down again. More. Okay. It's yeah, just a little more. I want them to see the schematic right there. This, this guy right here. You said, no, nope, no, nope, you went too far back up. Oh, right there. That one right there, right there. So you see right here is <laughs> the little D means deuterium 1.4 million electron volt energy coming in of deuterium. It comes in on this path and it bounces around in the field of the chamber in this. What's beautiful the big D mean then? Where's the big D? Well, well there's D. There's, yeah, big D. Yeah, that's that's deuterium. And okay. he, he used deuterium and helium three, but actually he's done he's done so many different tests. He's done lithium, lithium and deuterium. In the end, deuterium and helium three was the goal. Helium three is an isotope of helium. Our sun is fusing helium and hydrogen. So this is how fusion happens people this is what a fusion drive looks like and that is is very close to what where my pendants get treated now there are so many people out there who worked for me who were my distributors and thought oh we'll just you know sell pendants and say they're infused with energy and and people will buy them and we'll use cheaper materials and and, and these people work for me and then they went off. They Nobody ever saw my lab. They never saw where, where these pendants get treated. But I tell you, it's it's so close to this. That's the closest thing I can show you of what it actually looks like where my pendants are actually treated. And I call that scalar level four. That's scalar level four. Which is, which is the conditions that can reach where nuclear fusion happens. Yeah, so can you zoom in on the, on the center of that reactor if you use your zoom button, Shiroz? Yeah. Because we want to yeah, yeah. Yeah, just go to like 200% and then come back to the center of the, because some people can't see it. There you go. You see, that's the center of the reactor. The, the, there's... The, the beam of fuel comes in at a, a I mean, Magwitch and I talked about angle, materials. Um, so this is scalar level four. And if you go really close, keep going even closer, Shiroz, Kill on them. the core. That is not unlike a magnetic field coil design in the center, right? It's incredibly similar what happens, right? It's incredibly similar what happens. So the temperature Magwitch reached in there is unheard of in all so government. So it, it, was, it was from what you realized through this research that you designed the coil? Exactly. In fact, when when I um, come, come back out to, like we can go out of screen share now. So that's Magwitch's okay, MIGMA. There, there's a link to this um, where you can read about it. It's an amazing story in itself because after speaking in Congress under Clinton and Gore, we were blocked by Congress. They didn't want this to happen because it would have destroyed the nuclear industry. It, see, we need nuclear power plants that are radioactive to breed plutonium from uranium for nuclear bombs. And 
they didn't want these non-radioactive cubes, a meter cubed, could power a whole city, a whole city. And I was, I did all the communications at NASA. Earl Van Landingham was director of propulsion, power, and energy at NASA. And him and I spent hours. He was so frustrated at Congress that, that NASA required the money to do this because he said, we're so bored of these solar panels on the space station. We want a billion watts up there. We want, you know, they want 10 of these things in space because Earl told me that reactor that you just saw could produce velocities up to a tenth the speed of light and slow acceleration so that's how powerful organized magnetic fields are right so, so David, CERN, you... so somebody's Sorry, asking about CERN CERN is a yeah. particle accelerator this is different Maglitch was part of CERN and in fact when Maglitch saw my coils because I make these really big this is a small one this is the 14 inch base but I've actually have one on my office wall out there that's wider than the, the span of my arms. It's all mathematical. It's 28 points. And it has a massive field. I can measure it all the way on the other side of the yard. It's incredible. So remember, the energy is... You can watch the video of it on the website. It's there. Yeah. The, the energy is spinning at three quarters the speed of light. So imagine a vortex spinning at three quarters the speed of light. What does it do to a house? What does it do to a building? It takes all your EMF pollution and it reorganizes it and circulates it and recalibrates it to a harmonic. Right now, because of all the microwave towers bombarding us from all directions, people's brains are just turning to mush because those signals are pure mush. They're, they're not harmonics. They're not like, you know, Bach and Beethoven. They are chaotic mush. And that's why people feel like mush. So having one of these systems allows you to recalibrate the energy in, in the space and the cube will recalibrate a whole building in a huge building. It's amazing. Like Tesla had devices that could change the energy of an entire building. And, and some of these devices were, were very, very small, but in those days they didn't, they didn't even think of electric field pollution. See, to answer the question about CERN, CERN is a particle accelerator where I've studied particle physics. I know all the particles. I know what they do. I've, I've, I've gone through each one measured wavelengths, looking at particle, antiparticle pairs. I mean, this is what Maglitch did. He was a particle physicist. He, was a, he received an award from President Kennedy for the co-discovery of the Omega Mason with Louis Alvarez at Berkeley. And these guys were the champions of particle physics. And then you had Glenn Seaborg and Albert Giorso, and, and, and I was able to sit down with those guys um, and, and, and talk to them about my UFO sighting in Berkeley in 1968 at the Lawrence Berkeley Lab. That was an incredible experience. So when Maglitch saw my coils, this is what I was going to tell you the story, he wanted to enter it into a, a contest at CERN. There was a contest at CERN that was open... Wow to artists who would do an internship if they won this contest. And Maglitch thought I should win. But when they Googled my name and I submitted my one of my really big coils, they, they found out that I was interested in UFOs. And so they decided not to, to submit me. Oh. But, but he thought it was, they were so beautiful. He thought, you know, these should win you know, the prize at CERN for the open call for artists, which they did years ago before he died. So I'm going to, I'm going to share questions with you and then I have okay. some questions if they don't get answered here, but. So well, before I, them, before what? you do questions, before you do questions. So we have, these are 14 inch base. That's the plexi base. Then we have 17 inch and we have 24 inch. And as an installation, <clears throat> we can make, really huge ones that are, are really beautiful to look at and very, very powerful. And then we have the four coil system that people lay on in the bed. So that's the, you didn't, those you, are didn't, all, you, didn't talk, you didn't talk about the cube bed combo either as a med bed. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, when you really understand scalar, when you really get it, the, the cube and the bed combo See, most of the med beds that we've investigated, they don't come with very many frequencies, 
But it, my frequency library is so huge, I'm going to have to give a whole talk just as an overview of everything that's in my frequency library. And again, I use harmonic fields, which are very different than frequencies. A harmonic field is like a song, whereas a frequency is like you have your guitar and you're just going bing, 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 and you just keep repeating the same string. That's the difference between a single frequency and a harmonic set. A harmonic set is a whole song. And it, it's far more powerful what it does to you. So, so questions? Tesla, yeah, Tesla eventually got to a toroidal scale, question mark? I don't, in all of Tesla's patents, I don't think he developed, see, this is a toroid. A toroid means a donut. It, it is. It, it, that's. But there's the, the test, the rodent coils you see out there, most of them, are not wound properly and they're working on an incredibly weak scale but there are people who know how to make them and they're very good and i i have i have one that's almost this size <clears throat> i've tested it next to my smallest 14 inch coil here and it doesn't perform as well but that doesn't mean you couldn't make a rodent mathematic style coil that is big and much more effective you could but they would cost a lot right and again people are getting sucked into 500 dollar coils thousand dollar coils and um i i wouldn't put my body near mush like that i i i'm very impressed with rodent coils again i'm making because i know i met marco rodent they're not his coils. They're people who use his math, and some people use his math correctly, and some don't. And the ones that don't are going to give you mush. And and I would um, stay it, away. Go ahead. With, is it similar to a Merkaba spinning? I, sure. Sure it is. Okay. Because our, our Mer, this is spinning at three quarters the speed of light, but the See, that's the magnetic field encountering the resistance in the copper because electromagnetism encounters what's called the refractive index. And what slows electromagnetism light down the most is a diamond, right, which is carbon. But you can slow light down even more than a diamond in an Einstein-Bose condensate. You can slow it down to almost zero where it's frozen. Why is the diamond so bright? Because it's slowing light down. So therefore, it has a high refractive index. So, but also, I should go back to the cube for a second because the cube with the two metal plates, if you watch the video on my website, I'm running these two binaural beats, which are resurrection frequencies in the Bible. And it's humming. You can hear it going, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the reason it's doing that is the very thick aluminum plates are paramagnetic. Aluminum is a paramagnetic metal, just like the copper wire. So <clears throat> it's actually causing the aluminum to physically vibrate. And the speed of sound and vibration in aluminum is over 11,000 miles an hour. So the vibrations in my aluminum plates on my cube are going, you know, uh, minus the resistance of the dimensions of the aluminum plates. They're, they're vibrating amazingly fast. Those physical vibrations in the aluminum are so, so fast. So that means you've got a whole other vibration happening. And then when you add the gems to it and the crystal, like you can put a really nice crystal in the center of your vortex. And again, the magnetic field will excite the electrons and the crystal and the crystal will emit an aura. If you had an aura camera when this is turned on, in fact, we actually did this last summer. We use this incredible software to see the aura coming off the coils. And it was incredible to see it. Mm -hmm. See, I can, I can put this big quartz crystal and you can buy these yourself right on top of here. And I can set gems all around it. And in, in the space of a half an hour, if you pick one of these up, you're going to feel a whole new energy. It will radiate off of this for about an hour. And this, and you can put this on somebody's body. You can put it on 
on you know energy points on the body activation points on the body because it's been it's been activated by the field for a half an hour but then it'll wear off whereas these don't wear off this will but still this is very useful for practitioners who get one of these systems and you have a client who wants to do a treatment so the, the you can put crystals all around this and they'll get really active and then you can work with them on people's on on people's bodies do you need so, a receptor unit with your coil well you need an amplifier yes yeah i have I three amplifiers i recommend on my site the weakest one the smallest one is tested. I'm actually amazed at the quality of that little thing. I'm again, I test everything with headphones. Then we have a Kinpu tube amp, which really blew my mind with good music. So I knew my signal was really good. And third, the Yamaha, which is the most expensive. Yamaha make some of the purest amplifiers made. They just do. I know they're a common name, but their total harmonic distortion is so low. And if you, I mean, if I can, I could give you a good pair of speakers like Kef or, and, and they're, they're, you know, lower end good, or I could give you Kalipsch or I could give you Bowkers and Wilkins. Now I can have you play your favorite music with all three of these amplifiers and you're all going to pick the Yamaha. <laughs> you are, but it's all, it's more money, right? And I could tell you, that most people out there, these little bitty amplifiers with these little bitty coils are total trash. It would never use it on the human body. But if, you, if you're a practitioner or a healer and you want to work with frequencies, I would get the Yamaha. But there are many good amps. In fact, you can go on eBay and Yamaha are not my favorite. My favorite are Bob Carver amps. But they don't make them anymore. You can find old carver amps on eBay and get an electrician to fix it up. And you listen to speakers with carver amps, and they sound like a whole new speaker. I, I had a friend in LA and he told me he needed to get a whole new stereo. And I said, These are good speakers. Your problem is your amp is garbage. So go get a carver amp. They sold them in those days. His stereo sounded like a brand new system when he put a carver amp on his speakers. So that's how important the amp is. And why do I separate the, the frequencies from the amplifier and the emitter? Whereas most people out there are buying this plastic console, this cheap made in who knows where amplifier and a bed, a mat. And I'm like, I would never lie on that thing. <laughs> it's freaking garbage. I want a good amplifier. I want a pure frequency source and I want a quality emitter. And I don't, I don't have any way of getting investors to make my own amplifier with my own name on it. I just can't do that. So I can tell you that just about any good amplifier from the 80s, you can find them on eBay. And you might only pay a few hundred bucks for them. They're really good, like old Kenwood amps. Oh my God, there's so many good amps out there. But but when I see people buying this garbage and these little coils and they think they're rodent coils and they're not, those are not wound to rodents' mathematical specifications. Some of them are. I'm not going to tell you who has the good ones and who has the bad ones, but I can tell you there are good people out there who make good rodent coils, but they're not okay. Marco rodents. Can you spread a love vibe around with that cube to help Earth help the Earth plane? Well, see, one of my goals was to get enough of these out there that we could set dates and times where everybody turns on their coils or cubes at the same time, and you would create a very powerful event. Why? Because at the speed of light, it, it's 7.83 times a second, and you're you're going around the Earth 7.83 times a second. So you're going around the Earth once in one over 7.83, right? So there, that means that if when these are transmitting, they're transmitting around the planet, 
And when they're all at the same frequency, they're all in communication with each other. But, you know, what happened when I had my business stolen and everybody, all these people were copying me and, and Shiroz and I in the past week have found so many of them and they're so cheap. It really, it really hurt my goal to, to reach where I wanted to go because the customers became confused. And so I don't know what to do. Was I mean, it, wasn't just, Tesla tower a toroid, a toroid, a toroidal? Well, the to the top of like all the the Tesla coils, tower. you yeah, the, there's a torus up there, but that's not a coil. It's it's most Tesla coils have an aluminum toroid at the top, but but the the cylindrical part of a Tesla coil is a cylinder, and a cylinder is not scalar. But if you, if Tesla used an alternating current power source to transmit radio it becomes scalar and and i'm looking at his patent and i think that's what he's doing so remember alternating current the, the, is what we use to light the light bulbs in our house it's all ac whereas everything you know micro like your computer is dc so when you plug it into the wall it has a rectifier and it it converts the signal from ac to dc uh, you have a transformer, which transforms your, your your current and your voltage and your rectifier, and and then it's this is a very your computer is a very weak device. It's not using really that much power, so it, it it has every single electronics device has to have the transformer rectifier process, and then you have resistors, these little tiny coils that basically are making sure that only a certain amount of energy enters the circuit so it doesn't blow everything up. So when, T Timothy, to answer your question, when people buy my coils, they get my library. They get they get all the frequencies. It, so you, you that's what you're really paying for. I mean, the coil itself isn't worth what I charge for them. Um, although these are made by me and one other jeweler in Sedona, Arizona, and somebody else where I live in Canada right now. So they're handmade. So they're more expensive to make here. I beg to differ. I, I, I say your coils are priceless. They are absolutely worth what they pay well, for. This, well, no, that's just the, I'm, ta I'm talking about, this is the emitter. Then you have to buy your amp. But then when you buy one of these, you're getting the whole frequency library. So you don't have to worry about how much does this set cost and how much does that set cost? You get all of them. And I'm always designing more and more ratio band frequencies. So, so that's how it works. And, you know, there, there are a few other coil. I, I, I have a super coil that will eventually come out that, that could affect, you know, a much larger area than even the cube. And I know how to build it, but one of the things I worry about when I come out with these things, I have several companies that just come in and, and they copy it right away and then they say it's theirs. So it's it, uh, there's nothing I can do about it because people just don't have integrity. But what I can tell you is this, is the people who are stealing it usually don't know what they're doing. And they're the ones who the customers are saying, oh, blew up my amplifier. Um, I want my money back. And then th that person then loses faith in what this is really all about. So in a way, they're ruining it for the people who really want to experience. What is the experience of having your field tuned versus detuned? Because all the electronic fields and the microwave towers especially, there's over 100,000 microwave towers in the United States alone, are totally detuning the human nervous system, the human musical instrument, as Pythagoras called this, the musica humana. And when you when you have a tuning session, like when I go lie on one of my beds for 20 minutes, I get up and I just feel like I'm floating. I feel so pure. My, my nerves feel so smooth. Very, very and nice. Alive and alive. And, and I've had people who powerful. can't sleep. 
like sleep deprivation is so serious i've had people who can't sleep and they come over and they say oh, I'll, I'll just try this for five minutes i've had them go to sleep in my house for four hours right in front of me they don't wake up that's because they really needed a deep let go because the vibrations are tuned they experience a let go and when you have a let go you de-stress and then when you get up you feel so refreshed and you feel so energized so yeah there's so many by i have binaural beats trineural beats and quadrineural beats pentaneural beats septineural beats you know octaneural beats and nonagonal beats the, the the binaural beat is just the beginning it's just the beginning in a way that <laughs> elizabeth is saying the people that buy these cheap devices have karma that matches the guy that is selling them you vibe higher your followers will benefit from your devices we have your back and you will prevail <laughs> thank you elizabeth <laughs> <laughs> i had to i think it, i think it's hilarious i i just can't even believe people are doing this but nevertheless they do you know that i mean so Anybody who you know who needs any help, go to davidsarita.co. You can see my website underneath me to the left down here. Wait, here, right here. I'm putting my hand everywhere. Actually, to your left and your right. <coughs> oh, yeah. So, and Chiroz can help you. And you know, if you're interested in, in getting into a system, and um, any more questions, Chiroz, before I go. Um, well, you can, if you don't mind, because this is a big one that I often get asked, and that is, what is the difference with between PEMF and scalar? If you could just explain that, it'll it'll help a lot. Well, PEMF could be mush. You know, you can take a ball. I mean, there's so many. There's so many. There's so many PEMFs out there. What makes one PMF superior over another? Although I know you've talked about generally how your coils are superior, but just that well, whole aspect of PMF, pulse electromagnetic field. There's so many factors. There, there's quality. See, imagine that everything you see is particles and waves, particles and waves. So if I give you a bed to lay on that's made out of plastic, and it has little cheap coils inside and has a big name because this company I'm thinking of has a really big name. And I'm thinking, do I want a wave to go through the plastic and share the vibration of plastic with my body? Because my body's particles and waves, the mat I'm lying on is particle waves. And then my PMF is particles and waves. So one thing we know like about studying the, this was all done at Bell Labs in the early days. And um, they studied the, the, the secret properties of every material on the periodic table of elements. And every single element on the periodic table has a proprietary series of qualities. Qualities. Now, again, you can eat organic food or you can eat um, succotash, which is mush. <laughs> That's what they feed you in prison, which is corn slop. And the corn slop could be made out of, you know, rotten corn or it could be made out of good corn. So do I want an energy wave to go through a cheap plastic mat and carry an oil product, which is what that plastic is, vibration into my body? Because to a pulsed electromagnetic field, everything is reduced to energy. So you're an energy system. Your nervous system is an electrical system. You can measure voltage and current on your fingertips and your earlobes and your skin the galvanic skin response and um thanks david armstrong I, i'm so glad to see david armstrong here thank you so much he's an incredible <laughs> incredible musician there's a guy who's a musician and knows what i'm talking about if you listen to your music <laughs> on a good amp versus these little cheap mush amps your, your david's music is going to sound like mush i <laughs> mean you listen to it on a good Yamaha amp or a Carver or NAD. There, there are a lot of companies that make good amps. I, I really like Yamaha. But there are many. My favorite is Bob Carver, but they don't make them anymore. 
Macintosh made, not Apple Macintosh, but Macintosh made incredible speakers and amps. So think think of a coil as an emitter and, and think of your amplifier producing a beautiful quality because harmony and in your signal and then think of what are the materials so i put my beds in in cotton canvas liners why because cotton is natural um pvc is carbon carbon is what diamonds are made out of so i don't mind that um wood is really nice w wood is carbon and minerals um so the materials really matter they really do and when i found out some of these copycats were putting plastic gems they're calling them gems and calling gold gold when it's spray paint because when you put you know uh, uh, when, when you try to run current through this supposed gold 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 is high conductivity you should see current and there's no current it just means it's gold plastic spray paint and people think they're buying gold so this is what i mean get if you're going to get into PMFs, really do your research and get a quality system like mine. I'm not saying mine are the only ones. There are some other really good And And systems. it's also not about the quantity of frequencies. It's about the quality of frequencies. There's there's products out there that have thousands, 10,000 frequencies, 20,000 frequencies. But again, but it's not that you'll never the You'll never know what that means. If somebody's saying there's 10,000 frequencies, you, again, working with one frequency at a time is like plucking your guitar or your mandolin, bing, bing, bing. Um, there may be a certain benefit to that, but a harmony is far superior to, to that. Um, so... Um, yeah, thanks, David. That was great. You answered so many questions on so many different levels. It was, it was very... It was very good. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's a way of taking this to a whole other level. If I could find an investor to go to take this to a whole other level and have these things manufactured at a quality level. Like, here's another thing that went way down in quality is when you saw the amethyst biomats come out, I was really shocked because thanks, Peggy. I was buying amethyst in stores and putting it in the sun and it just turns clear and you can see all these inclusions this is real amethyst this is a real amethyst pyramid i can put this in the sun and it's not going to turn white but that's what i mean about quality most of the amethyst beds today that's not amethyst in there it's dyed cheap quartz you put it in the sun it'll turn white means it's dyed because the stone gets really hot and melts the dye and the dye comes up i've done this i've got tons of quartz around here that i bought online so i know where to get real amethyst and these are really nice pyramids i had these made and this is a nice real amethyst but there there's so many fraudsters out there selling you garbage. i remember it, that one time at one time last summer you bought all those amethysts and and, and they, they all turn just... white yeah they yeah. all turn white so they're they're and you're paying what again when you're going to get the real stuff it's going to cost more because it's quality it's going to last more this coil will last 100 years if you don't scratch it with a knife and drop it and play football with it i mean and then your amplifier might last you 10 years 20 years if, if it's a good amp and then you get another one and then you still have your emitter right but when you buy these devices where it's all in one in a plastic console and when it breaks i mean you might have paid eight ten thousand dollars for it who's gonna fix it like and and why are you lying on a plastic mat? I don't want to lie on a plastic mat because I, I don't want plastic vibrations going in my body unless it's pure carbon. But um, again, even amethyst. I, I tried <clears throat> to get lab-grown amethyst in sheets because lab-grown amethyst is real amethyst. Like we use lab-grown rubies from Germany that are really, really pure. 
but they're not cheap either. But it, you can go on Etsy and eBay and then Google and buy lab-grown rubies, and they're probably just glass with some dye in it. Put it in the sun. See if it survives the sun test. If it does, it's probably real. If it's plastic, it'll it'll survive the sun test, unfortunately, um, because plastic won't get that hot in the sun. But there's people out there. We know who they are. They'll sell you plastic gems. Sure. And gold spray paint and tell you it's gold. So you can do that if you want to. I mean, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm amazed how many people want to do that. They seem to want to do that. So <laughs> if you want the real deal, talk to me. And um, there, there are many other companies that, that I'm very impressed with. Like I remember years ago, before I developed a single device, there was this alarm clock you could buy. They sold it at these you know big new age conferences. And when you plugged it in, it recalibrated the electrical field in the electrical grid in your house and you would sleep better. And I swear to God, when I plugged that thing in, the energy in the house was so smooth. I don't know who, they don't make them anymore. I don't know who figured it out, but it I slept better and then I would unplug it. And I'd say, this has got to be a bunch of baloney. And then you could feel the difference, you know. So How that's that's a good it? question. I often get told that you know it's just it's just um, a placebo. It's not real. What do you respond to that? Well, what's amazing about placebo studies is that yes, the mind is powerful, but when you have to understand, at Dartmouth College, they measured the magnetic field of the human heart using squid magnetometers, and there's a real magnetic field there. And Heart Math Institute has done this too. The human brain has a magnetic field, very, very weak. And that means when you're in the presence of a tuned large magnetic field, whatever you think is going to amplify. Like I I had I had a person recently use one of my beds for free, and she never, she barely used it. And then she said, see, it didn't work. She didn't, she didn't want it to work. And I said, how often did you use it? I said, you use it morning and night, 20 minutes. No, I didn't really use it that much. Um, I, I didn't have time. She gave back to me. See, she didn't want it to work because she didn't, she, she didn't want to admit to herself that anything could possibly help her. So fine. So there you go. You cannot, if you go into a magnetic field not believing, you might get no results. So what is placebo? So I'm answering the question. What is placebo? Placebo is if you think you're getting medicine, you might think positive for a change. And that positive shift has an impact. It doesn't mean it's not real. Placebo is real. It shows you how powerful the mind is in that small percentage of people who respond to the placebo. But not everybody responds favorably in a placebo study where you give nobody the real deal and you see how everybody responds. You, you'll get a small number of people who improve because they really believe, oh, I've taken this medicine. I'm going to get better. See, that's to me, placebo proves how powerful the mind is. But if you're in an amplified magnetic field around one of these you know, sacred geometry star coils and you're having negative thoughts, you might get worse. So be careful what you think. Don't go in saying, nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to feel anything. That, that, how about try going in neutral at least? Keep an open mind, but don't be overly optimistic and seeing if because one thing i've experienced around positive energy lifters is suddenly you'll go oh my god i'm feeling really positive why am i feeling so positive there's nothing going nothing good <laughs> going on in my life you know everything's <laughs> going wrong in my life but why am i feeling so positive because when you get around positive energy you start to feel positive and you're like i don't want to feel positive so that you're, you're going to notice that too so there's people who will say, this is all a bunch of baloney. I had somebody who was making 
my products, who 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 didn't believe in anything. He said it's all baloney, right? So if you want to tell yourself it's all baloney in a strong magnetic field, then you're going to feel like baloney. And this guy actually felt like baloney and developed some very serious problems with um, addictions. So what, what what frequency do you start with for the bed? I always tell everyone the sun. Is that, is that correct? Well, it's always good to do the sun for five minutes and then move on to a frequency. Like I do 20-minute sessions. I get really into having my nervous system memorize, especially whenever I come up with something new. You know, my favorite right now is the resurrection frequencies. I just love them. I've been doing them for months. I've done the Ark of the Covenant. Remember, I uh, ratio, which is establishes a harmony, it transcends frequency. A frequency is a single number, right? So if you're broadcasting music at 21.9 megahertz on a radio station, that's one frequency. But when, to create a harmony, you have two to three or more frequencies that are in proper ratio and harmonic at the same time. So the resurrection our frequency, frequency. Of the sun, our frequency of the sun is a harmony, though, right? Yeah, the, our sun has myriad frequencies in the spectral analysis of it. So I have to say that when when NASA recorded the sound of the sun, you can't hear it because the wavelengths are too long, and therefore the frequency too low. So they just took the file and they squished it, and they sped it up so that you could hear it. So what I did is I took it and I slowed it down three times. So the slowest one is closer to the original recording of the sound of the sun, which is really the same thing as taking your sun and to make, because is making it smaller so you can hear it. Because the sun's, you know, wavelength is too big. So therefore too long. So therefore too low of a frequency. It's actually a delta wave, which is, you know, humans, the human brain, you know, starts, you could say 0 0.1 to 3 or 4 hertz. I forget where the border is. Then you go to, to theta, which is where we dream. And Earth, the Tesla Schumann resonance for Earth 7.83 is upper theta. So it means it's that we the visual active part of dreaming happens in theta we dream at the same frequency as our planet but there's not one frequency on the earth there's a whole series of 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 um, everything whether well, a sphere will form standing waves when 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 wave energy electromagnetic or sonic remember the speed of sound in air is about 768 miles a second but the speed of sound in aluminum is over 11,000 miles an hour. It's way faster. Different materials have different velocities. You know, for a while it was thought that diamond produces the fastest speed of sound, but actually it's beryllium. So beryllium is the fastest vibrating metal, which is in aquamarine. See, my bracelet is an aquamarine. So that's got beryllium in it. And beryllium vibrates uh, way faster than aluminum. Although beryllium dust is extremely toxic, if you breathe it in, you'll get cancer. But when it's in a gem like this, I mean, you don't have to worry about it. It'll never, it'll never come out. I mean, there's many gems that have beryllium in it. But beryllium does, is the fastest vibrating stuff on Earth. David, does sound create light or light create sound? Weren't they both created together, really? No, I would say sound creates light. Sound creates light. I mean, what yeah. came first? The in the word. beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. But God, God's word said, and then there was light. So in the beginning right. was a void, and darkness moved upon the face of the deep. And then God breathed, which 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 is the sound, and then there was the light. So, so you have right. to have electromagnetic energy is heat. And heat is born out of resistance. And if, you know what? If there's no resistance, there's no frequency. So a frequency is a vibration set up by the impeding um, of, of the movement of the energy going, trying to go through it. And that causes vibration. 
and that vibration is heat which is light because because heat light is see your heart if you look at it with really good night vision goggles up close it'll blind you how much infrared light is coming off of you and it travels at the speed of light so four and a half hours after you were born your infrared light coming off your newborn baby's chest will pass pluto in just four and a half hours and your light is going out into the holographic field in two function one is at the speed of light and one is actually scalar and another part of your field is faster than light but the visible the the function of the infrared light coming off your chest like by the time you're 25 years old, you'll have reached the star of Vega, which I was looking at last night. All right. So you're, but your light is going out in holographically in all directions. And all of your bio photons, because they're quantum entangled, they communicate with each other instantaneously, circumventing the speed of light. So you have a sphere around you from the time you're you know, eight and a half years old, your light has already reached Sirius A and B. So your hologram is who you are. And the older you get, see, I'm 60, so my my holographic light is 60 light years away. But that's the that's the more basic component. But the scalar part of me is much further than that. And that, that you, when you really realize that you are this, you were one with the solar system at four and a half hours after you were born. Where our fields, all of our fields are somewhere in the local star groups right now. We, we what, have that what distinction? Power. What dis what distinction is the scalar part then? I think it's the double Not. beat in in the heartbeat. The blah blah. blah. Bum, bum, bum. Like the, it's the double beat. Oh, <clears throat> the heart is the center of the wave. And there's a double beat in there. It's not just beat. Listen to your right. heart. It's love dub. Love dub. Love dub. And, and that's there, there's there's one field in the heart spinning one way and one spinning the other way. You know, you have you have um um I mean that that's there's really good studies done at heart math i mean it's really impressive what that organization has done with studying the, the the sensitivity and the receptiveness of the human heart energy field so this will really trip you up <laughs> that's the last thing i'm going to tell you because i'm going to start talking about this so let's do a chart visualize so when you look at vega the star of vega which is, you know, if you're in North America, it's rising in the east every night these days. And by the time it's getting dark, if you don't have clouds like I do, you'll, you'll see it right up in there. It's, it's about 25, 26 light years away. So that means you're seeing it 26 years ago. So we're actually not experiencing anything except for in time, which means we're only we're in we're trapped in time. Now, if I look at, if I go from Vega to Sirius, I'm seeing it as it was 8.7 years ago. If I go to Alpha Centauri, I'm seeing it 4.3 light years ago. I'm not seeing anything right now. And then if I go to the sun, I'm seeing it 8 minutes and 21 seconds ago. And then if I go to the moon, I'm seeing it 4.5 minutes ago, somewhere around there. So then when I get to my teacup in front of me i'm seeing it a nanosecond ago billionth of a second ago so where's now you can't see now but you can the human heart can feel now the real universe we don't see it we're actually trapped in a time dilation function and we don't actually know what the real time the real universe looks like we're not in the real universe we're in time and 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 this this is going to open a doorway because we're seeing evidence of this in the ufo phenomena of real time dilation by these these ets and when i was a physics student when i was very young 
I wrote a paper on time dilation that was mathematical. And, you know, my teacher read it and said, you know, this is grade 12 physics. He said, this is way ahead of where you are right now. This is Einstein's time dilation that you've done here. He goes, how did you do this? And I said, I did it myself. And I really understood it at that age, right? And wow. and and so from then, I ended up studying physics in Tesla on my own and working for these legendary physicists at the Advanced Physics Corporation in Bogdan Maglitz. And it was so funny when I worked for Maglitz. I never told him I studied physics because my job wasn't my my job was military communication and communicating the technology so i had to know the technology I had to know how it worked and one day he decided i'm just going to give david this math problem this long and he handed it to me and he said you can't use a calculator and i handed mm -hmm. it back to him and he said you got it right and he said he goes how did you do that and i said well that was easy what you gave me was so easy. I said, that's not hard. I said, I know you know how to do way harder stuff than that. But see, my job, I was not a physicist, but I had to know how the fusion. See, there's a big difference between this building something that works and real physics. Because mathematical physics, a lot of it is theoretical. But that doesn't mean that it's right. Because usually we get data and then we try to do math that explains the data, but then we get new data that violates the math. And then we have to come up with new math to explain the new data. So the math is rarely right. It's rarely perfect. We think it's perfect, but again, why was the Tesla wave and the scalar wave thrown out when Tesla filed a patent and actually demonstrated it with real data? Why don't we transmit signals, you know, to the different planets and the different, you know, um, uh, orbiters and, and, and satellites we have in the solar system using Tesla scalar waves because we could communicate with them effectively faster than light speed. Why don't we do it? And um, so, so there you go. Like the, the living, the living systems like I remember when John Bardeen, Will Bratton, and Will Shockley were making the first transistor, which they completed in 1947. The transistor changed our entire life. It gave us the internet. Um, there's billions of transistors in an Intel chip these days that are so small you need a microscope to see them. But w there were so many different kinds of transistors that, that Shockley and Bardeen were making and some of them we threw out that really interested me. And it has to do with understanding material science that was done at Bell Labs. They had a hydrated liquid transistor that really interested me because it had properties that today's transistors don't. And boy, would I like to see, you know, us go back to the drawing board and build some transistors that those guys stumbled upon and said, oh, we can't use a liquid transistor because it will dehydrate. And you, well, what do you do with a car? You have to keep putting um, transistor, uh, sorry, transmission fluid in to keep the car hydrated. <laughs> you can't let David, the car dry up. Yeah. Uh, th there's a couple of things. One, somebody wanted to know if the wands were scalar. And the other thing is there's a gentleman by the name of Sean Shannon. He's a doctor of hyperphysics, and he says, you do realize that a doctor of hyperphysics is watching you right now. In hyperphysics, math meets physics perfectly. Cellular systems no, are living. No, no, listen, yeah. I've worked for the best physicists in the world. I, I've been around Nobel Prize winners, and I can tell you it is in a constant state of flux. It, it, it It's getting better, and but see, if your math is right, you're, you'll be able to build an experiment that functions right. So you can't just get lost in the math. You have to build stuff that does. And, and that's the difference between. He also says cellular system. systems are living systems. Well, well, that's what a living system is. I mean, you could say cellular means the cell. But I can I could say an atom is alive. I mean, and I could say that that. 
the the functions of of subatomic particles from muons to tau you know to neutrinos to to leptons to, to you know there's so many different subatomic particles i've studied and and their orbits and their functions but i would say the work we did at bell labs was so far ahead of its time i've really studied a lot of the early experiments at bell labs we did things back then that could benefit science and humanity today and we never use them. And that's what I'm telling you about the transistor. It, there are materials that you can make transistors out of that could revolutionize the world today. But we just kind of said, this is what we need transistors to do. We have NPN, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And in the beginning, transistors were amplifiers to, to amplify weak radio um, signals, and now they're just gates. They're just gates, and they're they're used in in Intel chips, and they're they're doing everything on your computer from the colors to the sound. I mean, everything is transistors. And if we didn't invent those things, these three guys, if they didn't play off of each other, we wouldn't be where we are today. And I'm saying there are experiments they did in those days. Um, there's experiments we did in those days at Bell Labs that we could still benefit from today if we go back in the history books and we see some of the data they got. Yeah. So Jersey, Sean, says, Sean says, or Sean, Dr. Well, I, I, I appreciate who Sean is saying he is, but I, 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 I maybe we could ask him to contact you Shiroz, and, and maybe yeah, inter yeah, inter that's interview awesome. him <laughs> if he has something yeah. valuable to say i just want to close this session about the coils but if, if he has something valuable to share he can reach out to Shiroz, and we can we can see what he wants to talk about maybe we can do an interview and let him absolutely and let him talk yeah so De so Definitely. thank you everybody no that's the point okay okay thank yeah please thanks david Thank you. Thank you so much. Stop, Cam. Okay. Hi, everyone. All right. You're welcome, everyone. You're welcome, Dr. Sean Shannon. If you want to reach out to me, feel free. My number is... Or you can just simply call the, you know email at the website or message at the website. Uh, Timothy, if you like, I can call you. I'll connect with you on LinkedIn as well, and we can go from there. Anybody else have? Absolutely, most welcome. Um, yeah, that's my number. So you can call or you can text me, and at least we can nail down, you know, a time or a date. And Timothy, I'll connect with you on LinkedIn. Anybody else have any questions or anything I can help with before I go? I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, also connect with me on LinkedIn, Sean. No, no, no. I hope you don't mind me calling you Sean. Anybody else? Absolutely. Good to see you too, whoever LinkedIn user is. <laughs> oh, I still want to set up a meeting with David soon. Okay, David, then just please, uh, you also give me a call and we'll set it up. I'm Shiroz. I, I work with David. Who who's a LinkedIn user that's saying good night? All right, everyone. Good night.